Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at how you can create an interesting coin scenario in Command Modern Operations. For those of you not familiar with coin, coin simply means counterinsurgency, and how there's a wide variety of different insurgencies you can create, as well as how you can simulate them. But we're looking basically to give the player a little bit of a taste for things without kind of going too far. So for the purposes of this course, I'm going to be taking a look at our lovely, lovely Colombia here, uh, the great country for this purpose. If you know the historical context of it, of course, and of course it's also got some great terrain for us. Speaking of terrain, let's take a look at the terrain for a second here. So I'm going to go up to your land cover and take a peek at this very rugged country. There's a lot of things I notice, and of course, depending on how you're setting up your scenario, you want to be taking them into account. Uh, for example, I notice that the terrain of the country kind of varies. So we have a very, very strong Andes Mountain region here, which also has the very, very large population centers, which are going to be these guys in red here. The other thing I notice here is just kind of moving my mouse across is we have this broad savanna here, as well as, uh, you know, kind of grasslands here and everything else is thick, heavy forest. Uh, that's very important to us because one of the first things you want to do when you're designing scenarios like this is you want to try to understand the context of the scenario so that you can appropriately create your forces. Speaking of which, let's do that now. I'm going to go ahead and call this uh, Columbia. And I'm going to go ahead and create another group called, uh, we'll just call them Insurgents. Of course, if we were smart, we'd come in here and also create us some civil infrastructure as well, just to make it a little bit more interesting for us. So let's see what we got here. So the civilians, let's set up the postures here. Uh, the Columbia side, uh, they definitely consider them to be friendly. Insurgents, they consider them to be completely unfriendly. Uh, the Columbia, of course, we'll switch to them. Civil, of course, uh, they consider these folks to be friendly. Uh, they're not really going to go out of their way to attack them. Insurgents, of course, uh, as hostile as we can absolutely get here. And uh, when we switch over, of course, to the civil, uh, we're going to consider them to be hostile. And of course, Columbia, we're also going to consider them to be hostile as well. Now, there's a couple other little things I want to do in here. Uh, one thing that I want to do, which is a kind of important point here, is I want to make sure that this is a computer-only side, civil is a computer-only side, and I'm also going to make it so that it's blind. Uh, any of our civilian structures don't need to be able to see. It's uh, completely irrelevant. Another thing that I'm going to do while I'm sitting in here, too, is when we swing over to our insurgents, I'm going to reduce their proficiency a little bit here. Uh, the reason why is even though they can be very, very highly motivated troops, um, once the cluster bombs start dropping around your position, uh, they're just not used to that kind of a threat. So they struggle a little bit with that. So I'm going to reduce the proficiency a little bit as well. So the next thing we want to do is we want to try to establish some kind of geopolitical kind of what's going on here in order to make more sense out of where we're going to put stuff. Now, when I look at the terrain here, uh, one thing I notice is we kind of have the city here, but we also have this beautiful region kind of north of Bogota here, which is really, really, really friendly terrain uh, for our friends. But the problem is, is if you actually look at how rugged this terrain is, let's go swing to this real fast here. Open up, open. Uh, that's going to work pretty well for us. It's going to take a second. You can see that we have this excellent valley here to sort of operate in and out of here. It's got major highways. It's going to have plenty of support. There's large civilian areas that we can cause terrorist problem with. But of course, when you throw yourself into this massive valley here, you're kind of limiting your options to get out of the valley. Whereas when you kind of come down here, everything is much more broad and much, much, much more friendly to insurgent forces. If we need to peace, we got room to go. But again, this mountain range is beautiful. So for the purpose of the scenario, I see two different spots to kind of set everything up to. Let me go grab my uh, top, uh, not the topo map. That's nice. Let me go grab my uh, land cover map here. I see this region right in here, which is has a little bit of population, but it's also really, really good terrain for us. And I also see this more populous terrain that's uh, kind of coming through here, especially this zone right here, which could be an excellent place to basically put a bunch of insurgents and stuff, a lot kind of lining up because they'd be able to attack the political centers while still having somewhere to go. So I'm going to concentrate in this region here. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and uh, start with the insurgents. Swing over the insurgents real quick, and I'm just going to kind of define sort of their AOs, uh, kind of what I'm going to call it here. I guess it would be OA. I'm not going to worry about it too, too much come right here and again this will be sort of our operating region you know that works pretty well for me so let's go ahead and zoom in i'm gonna go switch off the land cover here again and kind of see what we have to see here um this is a pretty good spot here but again we've got beautiful beautiful kind of terrain to sort of hide in we've got forests we've got just about everything to hide from now when it comes to insurgent operations the whole goal is to basically terrify the local populace but there is no local populace left so we're gonna to have to go ahead and figure out what kind of problems they could cause for us in order to give us some kind of angle to actually proceed in our scenario so I'm going to swing over to Civil real quick here. I'm going to go swing over to, uh, let's see here, we want to do uh, land cover. And I want to see if there's any particular regions. And I see I've got some really, really good stuff right in here. So uh, coming down here, I can see I've got um, you know some of these little cities pretty well built up. This is definitely going to be where our center of operations are going to be today. Now, when I go ahead and drag across this, you can see this gets me a 16 nautical mile sort of operational area. Now, what we want to do here is create some tasty civil targets that uh, we could basically let our insurgents harass. So we could kind of basically do that voodoo that we do so to speak.
So what I'm going to do is come here and I'll go ahead and develop a couple of those. And I'm actually going to build it as a group. So swinging down here, I see that uh, we've got some pretty good elevation. I'm just trying to get an idea for scale here. I don't want to make this too big. One thing we can do is we can actually come in here and type in village. Now, if you come in village, uh, this creates an interesting problem because this is a marker called village. Now, it's an open structure and it counts basically as a simple one. And you'll notice it has a whopping 50,000 damage points on it, which is great because uh, this is basically going to enable us to uh, you know, basically make the village survive the attack. Uh, the other thing that we have at our disposal is a town. Uh, the advantage to the town, too, is um, other than the length and width being a little absurd here. Again, this is considered a marker for the town. Now, some people, of course, uh, when they go to put these things in here, I'll go ahead and put my town marker in here. This actually makes pretty sense. Uh, one of the problems they'll do is they'll try to create each individual building. Um, you could definitely absolutely do that, and we'll do that with the insurgents' little kind of base camp. I would not necessarily recommend it for this kind of a scenario. Now, if I wanted to be a really, really, really good designer here, and again, I'm be not being the world's best designer because, you know, this is just the purpose, I can actually come in here and find out the name of this town. You know, that's one of the cool things here. We'll call this El Amarillo. And of course, um, this is a little bit to the west of us, but that's okay. Now, the cool thing is I can now zoom out here. I'll zoom out just a little bit here. And uh, we can go ahead and copy these and actually load them into different areas. So I can uh, control C. Uh, let's see, we'll come to this particular region here. It looks pretty good to me. Oh, I just saw something important to us for later. Uh, Los Gallabos. Uh, let's see here. We'll come down here to Barbosa. Actually, Barbosa is more of a city than a town. Uh, Barbosa. And then we'll go to Guavata. I'll go ahead and control C, control V. Hey, you can press that. There we go. Rename G U A V A T A. Yes, I did not put the accent on the A. I apologize to all the Spanish teachers out there. Now, this is actually really cool. Um, this tells us a lot of information. And the other thing you probably notice in this really, really rough terrain is the presence of some other terrain features, such as rivers. And now that also means where there are rivers, there are going to be bridges. And now where we have bridges, of course, we have something important. Uh, one of the things they notice that is swinging down here, excuse the loading time here, is this a beautiful, this is the Rio Suarez. I actually have a bridge right there. You know, the reason that's important for us is now we're starting to come up with a scenario that makes a little bit more sense. Uh, it's probably a uh, 30 ton again. Uh, one of the things people do with bridges too is to make sure they're aligned properly. So that's, uh, let's see, we got a heading there. I can barely read that because of the text. 329 degrees. So you can actually come in here and get really, really specific as far as how this goes. Uh, go about three... 30 degrees, that looks pretty good. Close enough, close enough. And again, now that provides us a little strategic sort of uh, objective that they could kind of operate. Now, the other thing I like to do too, hey, so Smyria, um, just kind of look around, see if there's anything that's like, oh, I uh, got to put something there. But this actually looks pretty darn good. So I'm going to go ahead and flip off the Opotope map. And now we have kind of our civil targets. Uh, this is going to be where the insurgents are going to be wanting to harass. And um, <laughs> don't worry, they'll do a pretty good job of that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, save our scenario now. Now, one thing I always recommend whenever you're working on any sort of scenarios, uh, Columbia Coin Ops, as I always like to save it in versions. But for the purpose of this, I'm just going to keep it pretty simple today. Just press save. All right, so we have some civil targets. Again, I'm trying to keep the scope on this small so I don't go too crazy here. So now what we want to do is we want to start considering the uh, insurgent targets, sorry, the insurgent uh, kind of folks here. And again, since we've decided to move kind of up here, we're still within our region of operations. But now it's simply a matter of picking out where they're going to be operating for the purposes of making it crazy. Now, when you're going to be doing this, there's a couple of things you need to keep in mind. First of all, insurgents are going to have different types of things. They're going to have the actual units, the soldiers. Uh, they're going to have base camps. They need somewhere to stop and eat and go to the bathroom and all that stuff and reambush. They're going to have places where they're going to want to attack. And of course, um, some of these guys are going to have local support. They're going to need some way to do the reconnaissance. Um, otherwise, they're just going to be hanging out in the jungle and not having a very easy time. Of course, it depends on the terrain you're in. So we need to take those factors into account and sort of kind of plan our campaign a little bit here. So I look in here. I know that one of the most critical components for us in our scenario here is a single lane bridge as well as Barbosa because that is a very, very nice region there. We could also put like a little federal airport or something in there too to kind of add a little bit of interest to it. Again, it's your scenario, so you can decide exactly how you want to kind of play that. But for me, the bridge is probably going to be the most interesting thing. So now what I'm going to do is try to figure out where I'm going to be striking from. So I'm going to swing over to my land cover layer again, and I notice that there's this really, really nice broadleaf forest right here, kind of between all the action, and there's also this really, really nice little spot of it here. I do not want to operate out of this region because this region is not going to have enough air cover. Uh, you can see this is all natural vegetation 
vegetation mosaic, easy to see. So from a strategic perspective, it actually makes it really easy for me as a player. I know that I'm probably going to be coming out of here. I know I'm probably going to be operating out of here, kind of coming in and out. So now we know exactly kind of how to get our logistics together. So now that I know that, I'm going to just kind of create myself uh, just sort of a generic little region here. Let me go ahead and deselect all my regions. And again, I'm just planning this in order to make it as interesting as possible. Uh, let's see here. So I'm guessing this is probably going to be my base area. So I'm just going to call this my base camp area. Camp area. Cano. Cano. I should probably do this all in Espanol. Uh, area. Looks pretty good to me. Press OK. Looks pretty good. And uh, let's go ahead and measure some quick distances here. So that's about seven nautical miles. Uh, that's a long day's march if you're hiking. So if we kind of operate right out of this corner here, that's three and a half nautical miles. That's a good four hour march there. So that's uh, going to take us quite a while, especially with the terrain here. Uh, coming over here is not terribly easy. So our base camp itself, we actually can always predict where the base camp is going to be located just based on where our target region is going to be. So let's try to keep it within eight or nine, which is going to put our base camp right here. I'm going to go ahead and um, rename this one. I'll go ahead and select all the other ones real fast. And I'm going to control our base camp. Base of operations. Of course, you're not going to let the uh, player count know anything about this because um, <laughs> if they know where this is, they're going to blow it up right away and it's going to take all of our fun away kind of thing like that. Uh, keep in mind, you're going to be hoofing it mostly at night, doing your thing and then getting out. Or you're going to try to do it close to the evening so you can get the cover of darkness on your way out. And again, these are not nice areas to do this. So now that I know where my base of operations is going to be, I'm actually going to build my base of operations. So let's go ahead and shut off land cover, swing back to the open topo map, and um, let's see what we have to work with here. Oh, Oh boy. Oh my gosh, this terrain is terrible. But you know what I did notice? Look at this. Yes! Our insurgents now have a path to take, which also means we have the ambush point right here. That's going to be important to us later. You're saying, what do you mean an ambush point? See this river? They have to cross that, which means if I keep my eyes on this river, I get a free hit on them. So always kind of keep behind that. So I'm noticing here, there's a lot of built up infrastructure, that's not going to go well for us. Uh, we really don't want to just be uh, just building guys like right next to the road. That's going to make it kind of obvious, but we still want to have some access. So again, we'll kind of build our base camp in somewhere around here. Let's see here. This river's not too bad. It's going to be pretty good. I don't want to throw an attack. It's a lot of roads down here though, and I'm not loving that. I'm also not loving the fact that there's another town right down there in Puente Nos Now. So that's going to make it very, very challenging for us here. But uh, for the purpose of the scenario, we're going to do what we can with what we have. We're going to make this the little camp. I kind of like that. Sort of across there, we have a little bit of coverage. We can disappear into the woods. Again, this is very, very, very dense terrain. It's also very mountainous. Plus, we have access to this nice road here, so it's going to make it pretty good. All right, there's where it's going to be. I choose choo choose this mountain right here. So what is our base camp going to have in it? It's going to have a bunch of different components to it. So the first thing I'm going to do with my camp is I'm going to go ahead and type it in here, and I'm going to go ahead and type in structure. Now, there's a lot of really nice structures that you have, and you can get kind of sophisticated with some of these structures. Uh, one of these, of course, you can see you got all sorts of underground tunnels and stuff like that. If I went to hide underground, I could do something like that. But the big thing here is just kind of figuring out roughly what you would expect to see in a place like this. Keep in mind, things come at different sizes. We also have buildings. A lot of people are like, oh, I'm going to use a desert fort. I'm going to show you why you shouldn't use a desert fort. For it. The size of this, it's too big. It's going to get picked up uh, pretty much right away. Uh, some people are like, how about an FOB? An FOB is pretty nice too. But again, it's too large. And a lot of people will accidentally latch onto things like that without realizing, how about a military base? Same problem. But one of the things I did notice here is I noticed that there is a mast. I'm actually going to leave the mast out and switch over to building for the purposes of this. Now, this is a little bit better for us. So one thing we have is a communication hub, which is nice because it's a little teeny tiny building and it's a little surface building. I like this one. So we're going to go ahead and use that as our initial one. So this is going to be our communication hub. Uh, hub uh, let's okay, comm station. Again, you need to be able to talk. So this is probably a comm station. If you have a comm station, you're naturally going to need an antenna. The antenna is going to be at the higher part of the hill there. So if I type in antenna, you have a lot of fun choices here for antennas. And if you wanted to have a lot of fun with this, one of the things you could do, of course, is you could switch this to civil and um, kind of make it a little bit more fair, like they're kind of tapping into the local TV channel. Of course, if you don't want to do that, um, you can be a little more generic with this as well. So of course, we have to find the world's tiniest one. So I will do uh, ultra high frequency. It actually makes no sense. So I'll probably CB radio, pretty small. And of course, uh, one of the things you want to do is not make these targets detectable. Uh, you do not want the other guy to know exactly where these things are. This is actually a surprisingly detectable unit. 
Oh, take it back. It is not a surprisingly detectable unit. That is literally the most perfect thing I've done so far in the scenario. All right, let's come in here. Let's get ourselves a generator. Oh, you're going to need a generator. A uh, downside to the generator structure, at least the one that they give us here, is you'll notice that it is massive. It is actually so massive, I'm going to delete it because I don't want it accidentally. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in here. We'll give ourselves some tents. Uh, we have structure tents. Uh, tents are very, very small. Uh, the nice thing is that they gave for us, again, little tiny things. And you can see that you basically have to be right on top of them. And keep in mind, we're in a... Thick forest here, so this is going to make it a little bit more challenging for them to fly. So we've got a building tents. We've got a little antenna to do in communication. I'm going to make sure this is not auto-detectable. I don't want to make this too easy for the player. And now it's sort of a matter of deciding uh, who's going to be around here. And uh, keep in mind, with any sort of operation, you're going to have kind of your command staff. You're going to have the people down on the ground. You're going to have your operators. All that other stuff is going to be kind of mixed around. Keep in mind, these are very well-organized insurgents that they have this much infrastructure, especially right next to all these other things. But hey, this is just for demonstration purposes. So let's go ahead and grab ourselves an infantry platoon here. And uh, this is basically going to be our boss, so to speak. So I'll grab generic. Uh, you can even come down here and I'll type in, I think they have terrorists, but I'm not going to worry about it. You can even hit rebels if you want to have a little bit of fun with that. Totally up to you. You can also just do generic recon. Again, pretty good. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to say headquarters... Um, insurgent. Oh, that's nice. Spelled insurgent HQ. Press OK. Obviously, this would be a very high priority target. And one of the things they would do, of course, is they crank up their proficiency a little bit to represent that they know a little bit more. Um, they're going to need transportation, so I'm going to come in here too. Uh, I'm actually going to go over ground unit real quickly here. Actually, you know, we'll give them a group of trucks. We'll keep it simple for them. Truck. And we're just going to run down to the bottom here. And we have a bunch of different options here. We can do like a little Gaz Tiger. We can do a Humvee. Why not use a Humvee? That's perfectly fine. We can actually do a couple of those just to kind of represent sort of their organic transportation. Uh, last thing we're going to want is somewhere to store some ammunition. So I'm just going to come in here. I'm going to create myself an ammo dump. Ammo pad is probably plenty here. As a matter of fact, it's too big again. You can see that it's detectable out to one, which is, it's a lot of space. But it's about the best they would have. And again, until we have the ability to go in and like edit things individually, we can't do that. Just make sure it's not auto detectable. I can't say that enough so this looks pretty good um we'll add a little surprise for the player here i'm going to come in here real quick here and i'm going to grab myself uh, something 12 preferably something in the not too huge actually it's basically perfect 14.5 23 millimeter that's actually pretty good but that's huge again these folks need to be able to move these things around in the jungle so it's a little unreasonable to expect them to have something that big oh uh, let's say orkillian that's actually not bad either i think that's just a little little tiny thing Optical sight, again, 20 millimeters. That's got to be a bit of a surprise. <laughs> the state forces, to say the least. Oh, let's grab this one real quickly, the Zupu, and that should be fine for us. And that'll be the APA, or not APA, that'll be AAA, and it looks pretty good. All right, let's go ahead and save our scenario here. Nice. So now we have the insurgent base of operations. You know, like I said, I can go grab that little point that we created. I'm just going to drag it over here so I have a pretty good idea. So this kind of makes sense. Uh, we're not too far away from Barbosa, and we can see again. Normally, we would never be operating this close, this stupidly close to all the civilian territories. But it at least gives us, you know, something to work from that's a little bit reasonable here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a couple different organic forces. Now, one of the things they're going to want to do is they're going to want to make sure they protect all of their lines of communication. That's going to be critical for insurgent groups here. Um, obviously, if you can't talk to the guy that just got cut off by the government forces, you go smacking right into him anyway. So we need to kind of predict where they're going to be to keep an eye on things. And that's kind of the fun. Now, again, we've got our work cut out for us because I want to look carefully here. We can see a lot of these territories have pretty high peaks. So I'm going to come over here. I'm just going to sneak in an observer. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to do observers. You can do a little infantry section observation post. I love this one because it's simple. They're just basically standing there, keeping an eye on everything that's going on inside of the valley. Uh, we can grab another one of these groups too. Again, trying to get all these... Uh these are going to be the hardest ones to find, to be honest. And we'll just go ahead and take a bunch of peaks. And of course, Barbosa, which is going to be our target. If you put it here, it'll be spotted immediately. It's not going to be worth it. And we'll go toss them up here real quick. And uh, just trying to see if there's another spot. Yeah, right there. It looks good. So now we have a bunch of observation posts. I'll go ahead and save everything because we've done a pretty nice job with this so far. Now it's a matter of adding the actual insurgent groups themselves. Now there's a bunch of different ways we could do this. Uh, kind of the fun way, of course, would be to basically uh, spam out a lot of groups and then I'll let them kind of uh, just kind of go to town. And uh, that's, again, one of those sort of neat things that they will do here. So what I'm going to do real fast is I'm going to go ahead and populate a bunch of rebel groups here. I'm typing rebel here. Grab this one. looks pretty good. I'm just going to read it. Insurgent group. Go ahead and press OK. That looks pretty good. Shift C. And all I'm going to do is kind of sprinkle them around. And uh, you'll see why I'm sprinkling them around in a second. Uh, looks pretty good to me. That looks awesome. Yeah, they're all nice and spread out. Uh, nice and irritating. <laughs> Again, that's the thing that makes coin ops so incredibly hard. Now, one of the things I always like to do when I'm making scenarios, especially if other people are going to play them, is I always like to cheat a little and I give the player kind of a, a freebie. 
And uh, the reason I'm going to give the player freebies to make them feel like they're so clever, you know, kind of a thing like that. But uh, what will happen is here is you got these great little kind of paths that everybody can take. So what you can do is you can pick a point on that path that one of the enemy units got stuck in. And uh, the reason I love stuff like that is it, it gives you basically a free shot kind of a thing. And it sometimes reveals. But what I also like to do, because I'm a mean designer, is I like to design the scenarios so that this is the base. We need to keep the player away from this. So I'll give the freebie somewhere else. So I'm going to come up here to uh, San Benito. It looks pretty good to me. Press insert. I'm going to go put a rebel unit here that just does not make any sense. So I'm going to do an ammo truck. Oh my god, what a dumb thing to do here. And I'm just going to assume they're just taking the highway. And uh, the reason I'm doing this is uh, because it's going to give the uh, player basically a free shot. And I love doing stuff like this because the people are like, oh, I'm so clever. I, I found your ammo trucks. I must have found where the insurgents are hanging out. Meanwhile, I'm like, <laughs> nope. <laughs> Awesome. So the last thing, of course, what I want to do is I want to give them something to do. Uh, there's a lot of groups here. Leaving them in the woods is perfectly fine. Uh, this is going to be more than challenging enough of a scenario without us having to get really sophisticated here. But I want to make a group that's actually actively like kind of getting stuff done, so to speak. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab this little group here. And I'm going to come in here and actually add an organized or organization. Sounds pretty good to me. I'm going to grab myself. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do some, let's see here, INF. And we're going to give them a little bit more capability than they really really should have. So I'm actually going to add a mortar. And now the reason I'm adding a mortar here is um, it scares the player to death uh, when they see a 60 millimeter mortar uh, basically exploding over our heads. Now you can see here the range of this mortar is pathetic, but um, that's not a problem. And again, it's going to make things interesting for the players because I'm going to put them right here like that. Now what a lot of players will do, a lot of scenario designers, is they'll actually allow them to get into position and then let them start going to town. Um, these guys are not particularly fast. You know, if I click on them and press F3 and do one of those things, you'll notice my top speed here is 16. Oh, 16 knots! Man, those guys can move! So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move them here, and then I'm going to order them to get into range of the city so that they don't just start dropping bombs in the first five minutes of the scenario. So I'm going to go ahead and order them to move there, throw them all the way over here, and that's going to take them a pretty good length of time to cover that distance. Let's go ahead and measure that real fast. That's a 3.38 meter um, nautical miles. So that would be about an hour's travel time. Yeah, makes sense. So let's go set this to creep. Uh, we'll actually make it go four here. Um, <laughs> sorry. sorry. Uh, one of the things I do want to do is I'm going to press Control F9 here, and I'm going to go ahead and order them to engage opportunity targets so they will be harassing the player pretty much right away when the scenario starts, about an hour in after they get into position. Now, one other thing we could do too, so we can grab one of my, a lot of the sections that are just kind of buried somewhere, and we could order them to kind of sneak into the town and kind of do their things. All right, that's looking really, really good so far. We have ourselves a really good basis of different stuff going on. So what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and start thinking about the uh, Federales, kind of, so to speak. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, switch over here. I'm going to press uh, the Columbia team real fast. Actually, yeah, I'm going to press Control-V so we can't see it. And we know we have some allied targets here. Now, of course, what you usually want to do is you want to design the scenario so that they're going to have some tools at their disposal, but never enough to be able to put all the fires out at a time. Unless you're looking for like a squash match, so to speak, which is, that's a little different. So what I need to do is figure out where our aircraft are going to be operating from. And uh, again, the way we can do that is we can go back to the topo map. And I can see we have Puerto Boyaca down here. We have Onda and we have Bogota which is actually not far away. That's, um, what do we got here? Uh, it's 82, 82 nautical miles is perfectly fine for me. So what I like to do is I always like to see if there's already something available for me. So I come in here, open the sucker up. We're going to go down to Colombia and we're going to see if there's something already ready for us here. Uh, let's see here. That's uh, this one. We have uh, this one, Bienaventura. That's, I got some naval aircraft. I like that. That's a G car. That's Nicaragua. That's uh, Southern California, Ernesto, Modest Air Base, and Bogota. Okay, that's not bad. We could probably work with that one. Captain Luis, that's a fighter base east of Bogota. Perfect. Press close. And what that will do is that will get us a fighter base. Of course, I did not press insert. <laughs> so unfortunately, I have to go back and do that one again. But I'm not going to worry about it too, too much. It's one of those kind of a deals. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a single unit airfield for that particular purpose. Now, there are a couple different ways we can do this. Let me go swing back to this mode real fast. Uh, the first thing we can do, of course, is we can create ourselves kind of like where we would expect that airfield to be, like down in Bogota, for example. Go down to airfield. We're going to go ahead and make it relatively small. I know there's these fun tactical support ones, which looks good. Oh, that looks pretty good to me. Yeah, we'll do 2600, and we'll call this um, operating operating airport. Obviously, we have the actual name. We should always do something along those lines. I always like to shut off the auto-detectable. 
So now we have to think about a couple of different things here. Uh, what are we going to have as far as forces goes? Are we going to have military forces that we can deploy by helicopter? Are we going to have forces that we actually have the ability to uh, just kind of order into the region? Are we going to do everything by the air? And we have to start thinking about those things before we head to our next step. There we go. So what do we want to do is we want to give the user a couple different options so they can deploy what makes most sense for us. So for this, we know that we're probably going to have to take our lovely airport. We just imported that a second ago, by the way. Yay for editing. Yeah. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and populate our airport with some stuff. Now, I want to see what we have at this airport. Oh, that's a lot of, lot, of, lot of stuff here. And I notice here, whoop, let me press my 9 key on my keyboard. Let's see, we have a building, we have an aircraft hangar, we have an ammo shelter. Oh, we have some uh, we have airport terminal. Ah, that's what I wanted to find, kind of a thing like that. And the reason I'm interested in the airport terminal here is because the airport terminal is going to be the place where we're going to put our infantry, where we can get some stuff. That's the control tower. That's some tarmac space. Uh, that's some more tarmac space. That's, ah, oh boy. Uh, this is part of the fun, everyone. Boop. There we go. Let's see if I can spot it kind of uh, the old-fashioned way here. Uh, I've never been here before, so I don't know where the terminal is. Aha, got you. So we have our Eldorado passenger cargo terminal. Excellent. So this is going to allow us to go ahead and populate some of our forces that we can use in our scenario here. Go ahead and save our scenario real quick. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to break my group up here. Oh, you can press the 9 key and you can uh, numpad, by the way, to switch to the new this. I'm going to find Eldorado cargo passenger terminal building, and I'm going to go ahead and add some cargo to it. So we need to figure out what kind of stuff we can add. And there's so many different choices. Of course, if we go over to the database, you can see that we have plenty of things to pick from here. And again, different people have different ways of kind of loading things. So one thing you'll notice is you have mobile facilities and you'll notice you have ground facilities or mobile facilities, ground units. Got it. So uh, one of the things we need to think about is how we're going to do this. And one of the cool things is if you actually go down here to filter by, if I just type an I and F, um, and your computer's going to lag so hard, you're going to think you broke something. But after we do that, of course, you can actually see there's plenty of infantry groups to pick from. And we have infantry platoons, we have infantry sections, so many good choices. Now, ideally, one of the things we do is we come down here and there'll be Colombian troops for us, but that's fine. I'm just going to grab some infantry platoons. So what we're going to do is load them up. Uh, we can do special forces, we can do paramilitaries, uh, there's so many different things that we could put in here, depending on what we can do. We can even put straight up uh, paratroopers if uh, we wanted to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, one of the cool things is you can go ahead and give them custom names. You know, this is the 32nd Infantry or something. But for my purposes today, I'm not going to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add in a bunch of uh, generic infantry platoons. You know, nothing crazy, uh, nothing special. I'm not going to add anything I live on. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give the uh, user kind of a freebie is the best way to say that. I'm going to go ahead and add a mortar as well. The mortar is going to unbalance the scenario so painfully you might not be able to come back from it. So uh, just kind of keep that in mind. The moment you get the mortar, things are going to change around here. So let's see, we have a 60 millimeter mount. Oh, that's actually not quite what I want. Uh, we have mortar sections, uh, 20, 60, 60s are pretty good size. And we have a couple different groups here. So we're just going to go ahead and give them one of them. Just like that. Uh, that's going to give us just a little bit of stuff to work with. And again, as you play the scenario a thousand times, you're going to have a fairly good idea of what to do with that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll save all this real quickly. I like that. I'll go ahead and close that. So now we have cargo. And uh, if you press edit cargo, it's going to get very grumpy at you because remember, the cargo is part of that one building here. So now let's add some aircraft. Uh, we have a million different aircraft to pick from for this particular purpose. Uh, one of the things we could do is we can actually come down here to Colombia. And you can see we have some great choices. And it'll even do things like let us know how many of them they want. Uh, for example, if one A37s, which are one of my absolute favorite coin planes, they're not great, but they work great. Of course, we have the Super Tucanos, which are absolutely fantastic. Uh, these are much newer airplanes. Uh, we can definitely utilize those as well. And you also get really critical things like helicopters, and we're going to need some of that because it's going to make our life a little bit easier. We also have some strike aircraft in here, depending again. We even have some Mirage 5s, which are great. Uh, one of these great things here is we have the OT-47B, which is awesome. So I'm actually going to go ahead and add one of those, and uh, we're going to just do this. Again, one of the things we could do is come through here and uh, carefully name and rename everything, but I kind of like that. Again, this is just the initial piece. Uh, Colombian Army, uh, we'll go ahead and add about 12 of those. Uh, plenty of those, that's actually too many, but um, that's okay, and we can come back and edit these things. And now we need to get ourselves some of our coin planes to make things interesting. So we have the A37s, the A29s, the correct answer here, of course, is the 37s, and uh, 12 is quite a few. Uh, you can see they own 32 of them, so having 12 is a lot. Uh, we're going to make sure half of these are maintenance so that uh, we can not actually utilize them. And then, of course, it's just a matter of, do you want to add some UAVs to make it a little bit easier? Uh, do you want to add some kind of you know refueling aircraft? Again, depending on how much time you're going to be spending in the air. A lot of really, really good choices. And we'll go ahead and add one to Scan Eagle here. That's a pretty good collection of forces. And you're probably sitting here going, really? Uh, let's go ahead and set that up. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come over here. I'm going to press my F6 key, and I'm going to get this set up. So the OT47B, real quick, I'm going to grab that one, and I'm just going to set this one to area surveillance. I'm going to enable quick. Uh, this is a military operation after all. Our helicopters, even though we have that many of them, I'm only going to give you a few of them. And we have a couple different choices here. So we can do airdrop and stuff like that. That's going to give us a little bit of cargo capacity. Run down here. We're going to set these to maintenance. These are just to kind of taunt the players. Coming down to the A37s, uh, we're going to have six of those ready to go. And you can see we have a bunch of different choices here, and uh, keep in mind, whatever we end up picking is going to be what we're kind of stuck with. Um, we can go ahead and add in uh, different types of munitions and stuff, and again, let the player choose that kind of depending on how they want to do it. But for us, we're just going to keep it simple. I'm just going to give the users a bunch of these, which is plenty, and we're going to grab the rest of them. We're going to slam them into uh, maintenance, of course. <laughs> now we're going to come down to the scan eagle here. We're going to press ready arm real fast. We'll set this one to area surveillance, and now we have ourselves a really, really good group of units. Now, one of the things you probably observed here uh, when we were setting this up, if I click on barred one real quick and I press the cargo ops button, one of the things you'll notice is I can't load any infantry into this unit. This is a cargo only helicopter, so we have to fix that. Fortunately for us, the Bell 212 Utility Helicopter, uh, they've got a couple of these, which is actually pretty nice. Uh, they do have the ability to carry commandos. Uh, that's only going to be part of a solution. Let me show you why. You'll see here after we open them up, even though we've given them a loadout for commandos, you'll see we still don't have enough space here. Uh, the problem we have is our infantry platoons are 16. Uh, we need a much larger helicopter for this. So there's a lot of different ways we could solve this one, and I kind of like to use this method personally. Ah, wasn't it nice that the United States military offered to give us some CH-47s? Now, the interesting problem with this one, and uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at that real quick, is uh, when you actually go to ready arm this particular unit, you'll probably observe that it has 33 or 55. So when I actually want to load troops into this, I can actually go to cargo ops, and you can see I have everything ready to rock here. The one thing I cannot carry, though, is I can't carry this mortar section. Uh, that's part of the fun, and the reason I can't carry it, of course, is just a little bit too big. Uh, you can see here, the biggest thing I can carry, I can't carry small. That's just too much to us. Of course, if you would run up to our to, uh, Bell 212s or something like that, we could. And one of the things you could do, of course, is we could come in here and switch this to a slung load cargo. Uh, this would be an interesting experience for that crew. And if we go back to cargo ops here, you will see we can now carry the mortar section, which... <laughs> <laughs> uh, you have fun being slung load as a mortar team. But again, it is uh, when you're the designer of the scenario, uh, you can decide exactly how you want to handle that. That's not bad. And of course, the other thing we could have done too is reduce the size of the squads. If uh, We can actually make handheld manual squads too if we wanted, which works, but I don't know, it just gets a little... It's kind of finicky, so I'm not going to play with that too, too much. And again, we can get a little creative as far as how this goes. So I'll go back to this one. We'll go ahead and uh, set this back to 33 troops. Uh, ready immediately. Uh, we'll grab uh, 33 troops. We'll go, ah, ready arm. We'll go ahead and set these ones both to cargo. Cargo slung load, ready arm. So now we can actually carry the mortar. So we're ready to go. So now we're in a really good spot as far as our scenario goes. Uh, one thing we could do, of course, is to make it a little bit easier for the players, we could go up to scenario and features here. Uh, we could go down to I'm at communication, realistic communications. We don't need that. Fire control, I like. We can make the unlimited magazines at air naval bases. Not a bad choice. And I, of course, like the advanced terrain techniques, which makes things fun. So now, of course, this is uh, the fun part of the scenario. This is when we're going to kind of build some of the last couple pieces that we're going to need for the purposes of our scenario. These are going to be things like briefings. Uh, these are going to be things like setting up our events and all kind of our trackers and stuff like that. But we have enough stuff to go on now to kind of give this thing a spin. Uh, one thing I will do, of course, is I'll give it a date. Uh, let's see here. We'll set this up relatively early in the morning. So we'll do 14.30. That should be pretty early. Okie doke, okie doke. And that gets us about 9.30 in the morning, which is uh, pretty darn good. So let's go ahead and adjust the weather. I'll go up to weather. It would not be that cold. <laughs> it would be quite a bit warmer. We'll do 22 on the Celsius scale. We could actually bring in some rain if we wanted. Uh, one thing I like to do is uh, bring in some moderate clouds. That's perfectly fine. Make it, it's not going to be windy, windy because of all the trees here, but at least it makes it a little bit more interesting. So at this point, we switch to the let's play with the scenario stage. Everything is saved. We've got our aircraft ready to go. We've got our stuff done. One thing we did not do is we didn't go into doctrine. A lot of people, when you're doing coin ops, they'll actually change this into sustained. And uh, the nice advantage of that, of course, is it's going to slow your scenario down massively, which it might be more realistic, but it might not be as much fun. Just something to be careful there. And uh, one of the things I always like to do too is um, if you're going to do air to ground strafing, it's a good time to set up some air to ground strafing if that's something you desire to do. So let's 
go ahead and get our scenario started. Again, we're just going to play this one very, very quickly to get a feel for just kind of how it works. So obviously, yeah, most players, what they would do is they go ahead and say, this is going to be my AO. And again, you would take time to create zones around this and everything. But we've been going on half an hour already. We want to give some folks kind of a, an opportunity to see kind of the fun, so to speak. And I'll do a control insert real quick. We're going to press control F11 here. We're going to say support track. Again, we're just going to keep this as simple as possible. Like I said, uh, speed run, as they like to say. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and toss some things on that right away. I'll grab our scan eagle, which is fantastic. We'll also grab our OTB traffic, and we're going to throw both of those on there. Mission settings, I'm not going to do one third rule. Um, absolutely, we're dealing with terrorists. Our you know, people basically run around the woods. I should be more specific. One person's terrorist is another person's freedom fighter. Everybody knows that. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to set that to active. Uh, it's not going to make that much of a difference here. And now one of the things we can do too is lower the altitude substantially because uh, right now our aircraft settings here transition station throttles fine station altitudes way too high i'm gonna set this to uh, 12,000 feet here uh, that's going to give us a little bit better view you're gonna have to get very close to see things here um now that we've gotten that uh, next thing i would want to do if i were playing this as if it was a real scenario is i'd be loading up all my stuff um i have my two uh, helicopters here cargo ops i'd shove as many people as i absolutely positively could that's two squads not a lot i'm gonna go over to this cargo ops here i'm gonna go ahead and throw a couple of these on here as well i'll load all I'll confirm on that one we're gonna grab our poplar number three here he gets the mortar team the mortar team in my opinion, is the most important thing that they're going to have. So I'm going to go to unpause. I keep in mind, I already saved the scenario. I'll speed up time a little bit here. There goes my two scanning units. Now, one thing I want to check real quickly is it's going. I'm looking at my CH-47s. It's going to take him nine minutes to get going. I'm going to go ahead and take these two right away. Some people are like, can you just do like a ops, uh, like a cargo ops operation? He absolutely could. Uh, the reason I'd rather do this by hand is when you get scenarios that are this small and this simple, I really like to do stuff by hand. I don't know. It's just more fun that way to me. So I'm going to go ahead and order this, uh, well, basically my CH-47s. I could set up like a cargo, like an operation where they go back and forth and do all this manually. But luckily, I've already spotted something. So uh, that works for me. It looks like we spotted the enemy's uh, camp there. So uh, now that we've spotted the enemy's camp, I'm immediately going to go ahead and control F11. Uh, unfortunately for them, their camouflage sucked. Uh, strike this. I'm going to go ahead and do a strike, land strike, press okie doke. And uh, we're going to go ahead and commit all of my A37s to this purpose. I hate the idea of committing all of my A37s. So I'm going to leave two of them as reserve here just for the purposes of kind of helping us out if uh, things go down um i'm gonna strike this right <laughs> you know how many times i've done that i do that to myself every single time so we're gonna leave a couple in reserve i always recommend reserve um reserves critical mission settings it's gonna be a group of four that's perfectly fine for me escorts a uh, one-time attack uh nah they want to go down and uh, dive into the weeds there and kind of do their thing they're gonna be fine so at least we have something prioritized we've kind of given a frag order here unpause and then we're gonna go ahead and send that group of units up there right away and of course so uh, we have my infantry coming so uh, they're gonna be coming in a minute there they go oh we spotted something so we started some enemy infantry there, which is fine. Oh, we got lucky on that one. Um, now we can go ahead and grab those other aircraft that I mentioned a few minutes ago. We can get them going as well. Let's get uh, my two groups here. Let's go ahead and launch that group. We're going to launch our mortar crew. I think our mortar crew is on board this one, if I recall correctly. Yes, it is. So I'm going to go ahead and get him airborne as well. Again, we can handle all these things with missions, but I don't know, it's just kind of fun to do it this way. <laughs> so let's see here. Again, now you have all these things to keep track of. Little skin eagle guy is kind of doing his thing. Again, you can do a patrol mission too. And go and zoom in here. One thing that's kind of fun is you can go like this. So you can actually tweak what direction. So here comes my Tucanos. Uh, they're going to come rushing in here, diving across the jungle at super low altitude. One thing you don't get a really good look at here is just how rough this terrain is. This is very unpleasant terrain to say the least. Let's go ahead and see. Here comes the Bobo One here. Okay, they're going in to attack the camp. What a lucky day that we got uh, something like this. And now we can kind of just come zinging down here. They're about to drop a ton of rockets all over that. And again, it would just be a matter of testing the scenario. There they go. Oh, we wasted a lot of those rockets. But uh, <laughs> part of the fun, as they say. And keep in mind, there is a Humvee here. And oh, we dropped a couple bombs. I really hope you did not waste that on that stupid antenna. I'm going to be mad if you... Oh, Ah, <laughs> that was expensive waste of ammunition. Let's go ahead and grab this other group here. I'm going to go ahead and order them to target that infantry. And they're just going to kind of hang out in the region after they get airborne. Like I said, always have a reserve. Then, of course, my CH-47 is going to be coming in. And we're going to get ready for... Oh, there's something else. 
Nice. Hey, we're starting to find all sorts of fun things here. My two Kanos are doing their thing. They're bombing that enemy camp that we spotted. Again, a relatively too easy of a camp to spot. But again, we had really, really, really nice uh, units for this. And it's not like anybody firing SA-7s or anything up at us or anything like that. And then we can go ahead and get our CH-47 in position. And then my regular infantry can start doing their work. Let's go ahead and grab my mortar team. we got to find a good spot for my mortar team. Grab that one real quick. Uh, let's see here. Good spot for mortar team. Probably centrally located. I'm just going to put them right there. And uh, that will be a little bit easier for us. Tucanos are doing their little piece. Actually, no, Tucano, I keep saying that. My tweets are doing all their work here, which is awesome. They're coming around for the pass. Again, you can see how challenging it is that when we lose sight of the target here, we really desperately need that particular, um, basically, the UAV to have it. All right, these folks are good, so I'm going to go ahead and order them to unload everybody. Unload, unloading cargo. Now, does anybody remember that game? <laughs> that was a pretty fun game. I enjoyed that one. Let's see here. Forest Commander, by the way. And, oh, no, we're under attack. No, 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 abort, abort. And look at that. Right on time, my mortar crew did exactly what I wanted them to do. Look at how nice that is. See how it creates like a fun scenario, like the player thinks they got it, and then all of a sudden things start going downhill. Oh, I've got to get these guys to an altitude where they actually can unload things. <laughs> They're a little high up right now. Uh, of course, uh, you right-click and order them to unload units, and it's just going to get so messy because uh, they're up here nice and low. you got to get them all the way down to a hover. Got to get them down to a minimum altitude here and all that other good stuff. And you can see they're kind of taking their sweet time. Yeah, uh, folks, uh, we can also unassign them too. Unassign. Hover. Minimum altitude. Do I need to break you into two different groups? Eh, part of the fun. Go break these into two different groups. We'll order him to uh, hover. Minimum altitude. We're going to grab him, hover, I mean, it was just him I was being ordered. Ah, it's one of those fun things like I always do. There we go. Thank you, popular one. Thank you, thank you. Unload, please. Grab him, unload. It's going to be very challenging to unload because of this mountain strain. I'm probably going to have to take these steel helicopters and take them up to this flat spot. But that's all part of the fun of uh, doing scenarios and testing things out. So we can see here that our mortar crews are firing. But look at that. Just on time, my A37s come running. Now, look at that. <laughs> well done, A37s. I'm going to go order them to go do that attack as well. And now we have ourselves a pretty darn fun scenario. So as you can see, uh, creating scenarios like this, a lot of fun. Uh, it doesn't take too long to build a scenario. A lot of things we'd have to change. Uh, one thing is we're probably going to adjust the helicopter infantry situation because uh, we can see we're struggling with that a little bit. Uh, one thing we'll have to do is probably put the infantry, unload them here, or we're going to have to put an air base and then eject them from the air base, set up like a FARP kind of in this region, maybe a helipad or a small like civil airport. We could do something like that. It's not too bad. Uh, the other thing we noticed is our little base was very easy to spot. And uh, like I said, on our little target trucks, remember how there's trucks going down this year? Uh, we never even saw them, but uh, again, that's part of the fun. And then the other thing I think too is that we have just a little bit too good of reconnaissance. Uh, we probably should have waited for the attack and then kind of zip through at low altitude with airplanes to go at it. But as you can see, pretty cool stuff. Pretty cool stuff. Enjoy.